We spend our time checking rails, sleepers, switches and crossings. They're all right there in front of us. But the asset that protects them all, you almost never see it. Drainage. And it's only when drainage goes wrong that you realise how much the railway depends on it. In this video, I'll show you what railway drainage is, why it's so often underrated, the consequences when it's neglected, and the payoff when it works well. And I'll also point out the everyday clues that tell you when it's failing. Drainage is the collective term for the system designed to move water away from the track bed. At its simplest, this means ditches along the side of the track, the same kind you'd see next to a country road. More importantly, inside the railway itself, you'll often find a run, a connected sequence of pipes and catch pits. These sit either between the lines or in the cess beside the track, giving water a path of least resistance from the ballast and formation out to a safe outfall. But here's the twist. The assets you rarely see are often the ones protecting everything else. And with drainage, that invisibility is exactly what makes it so underrated. People tend to underestimate what they can't see. And drainage is no different. As we said, rails, sleepers, switches and crossings all sit there in plain view. They're easy to inspect and every train that passes shows you exactly what they're doing. Their function is obvious. Drainage, on the other hand, is hidden from view beneath the surface. Even looking into a catch pit often tells you nothing unless it's pouring with rain. Because it's underground, drainage is harder to inspect and maintain. Like sewers and other buried pipes, you often need CCTV or rodding surveys to check its condition. And over time, drainage can vanish from view altogether. Catch pits get buried under ballast and ditches and outfalls get choked with vegetation. The little evidence it ever existed disappears too. And when drainage is forgotten, it doesn't stay hidden. It shows itself in the track and the results aren't pretty. Drainage is needed because of the damage water inflicts on the track. From wet beds and formation failure to flooding and full washouts, water can cause problems on every scale. Waterlogged ballast degrades, leading to the appearance of wet beds or the weakening of the formation below the ballast. In both cases, support for the sleeper and the rest of the track is reduced. First and foremost comes deterioration of track geometry. Voiding, twist faults, top faults or cyclic top can all develop, each of them a derailment risk. Then there's the loss of restraint. One of ballast's key jobs is to resist the forces of passing trains, and even more importantly, the thermal expansion of rails in hot weather. Ballast prevents track buckles, and when water causes ballast degradation, that restraint is reduced and buckles become more likely. Like many track faults, once these issues have started, they only get worse, and interventions keep getting bigger until the root cause, water, is addressed. And the thing is, you won't always spot failing drainage head on. Instead, it leaves behind clues, subtle signs that give the game away. Water works in silence, and while we look for buckles or broken rails, hidden water under the track quietly undermines everything about it. And that's where today's sponsor comes in. RailSense have developed Track Water, a system that gives real-time alerts on flooding and silt buildup in drainage. Instead of waiting for the signs that show up on the track, Track Water gives engineers the early warning they need to fix problems before they turn critical. You can find out more about Track Water and the full RailSense range through the link in the description or in the top right hand corner now. So if drainage is mostly hidden from view, how can you tell when something's wrong? In an ideal world, regular inspections would always spot drainage issues. But if not, there are some telltale signs. Standing water is the obvious one. Vegetation in drainage ditches or catch pits is another warning sign. In ditches, it blocks the water's flow. In catch pits, it usually means the pit is full of silt again stopping the water from moving and if the same stretch of track keeps developing wet pits or geometry problems chances are the drainage underneath isn't doing its job when these clues appear it's time to check the drainage and get it working again it costs money but leaving it costs more and that's the real sting once drainage fails the bill for putting it right escalates fast the cost of not maintaining drainage or even worse removing it is steep the geometry faults we mentioned earlier demand repeat attention with escalating levels of work if the root cause isn't addressed. If you want to go deeper into how track geometry works, especially the link between curves, speed and cant, I've put together a free guide to cant. You can download it using the link in the description. What starts as manual lifting and packing can soon escalate to tamping or stone blowing. If problems go far enough, speed restrictions may even be needed to keep trains safe. Fixing wet beds or failed ballast means ballast renewal or cleaning. On smaller sites, renewal is easier, but it's still a big job. Methods range from manually digging 
to undercutters to full track removal, all significant undertakings. And finally, there's full renewal, the ultimate admission that something is fundamentally wrong. And when you take it all out and start again, it's the perfect chance to sort out the drainage. But unless that opportunity is seized, the same problem will come back. Getting it wrong is expensive, but getting it right, that's where the real value lies. Now imagine drainage is in place and working perfectly, carrying water away from the track bed to a safe outfall. The track bed stays stable, with good geometry maintained. Yes, it may need the odd intervention, a tamper every few years, but nothing major. Every job on the track has a cost, even if it's just wages. And every railway has its problem spots that soak up a disproportionate amount of time, effort and money. And I'd bet many of those places share one thing, poor or missing drainage, which is why drainage might just be the most underrated asset on the railway. Hidden, forgotten, but protecting everything above it. Drainage is the most underrated track asset. It's hidden from view, it barely gets noticed when it's doing its job, yet it quietly protects the very foundation of the railway. I'm thinking of doing a full-on video on how drainage fails, and how engineers design it right to avoid these problems. If you'd like to see that, let me know down in the comments.